Thanks for coming in. It is really uh, exciting to have you we, here. I, I gotta say, we're all very excited uh, at various levels to have you here. All right. Because you're very impressed at your business acumen. I mean, that's it's going great for me. You know, so far so good. Huh? You have like the minus touch. Yeah, it's been working out. I'm trying to be like David. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get to your uh, your book here in a second because that's why we've got you on. But within Wall Street, legendary is the deal you did with Vitamin Water. You were an original investor. Then Coca Cola bought it, and it's reported that you made you I personally after taxes a hundred million dollars. <laughs> yeah, it's an exciting deal. I mean, the opportunity to get in in the infant stages of that company was amazing for me. So it's probably one of the biggest. It is the biggest deal. And, and any more on the horizon? I mean, how did you make that decision? And do, do investors still come to you or potential entrepreneurs come to you and ask you to invest? And well, how do you decide? It was a simple process. Initially, I was actually in the no-frill section in the supermarket. Mm -hmm. And I got a chance to see how Poland Spring would sell a gallon of water for $2.69. And they'd have a no, whole other section where they're selling spring water for 50 cent. They can always be a portfolio manager. You know, and I'm, <laughs> just, saying, I'm just looking like it's such <laughs> an it's extreme it's difference. But here's the question out. we have then. I mean, the music business is in disarray. The, the whole yeah. business model is changing daily. Almost. Absolutely. How do you, not as a businessman, but as a performer, how do you make money in this business then? I mean, the way it's changed, like you were saying, the technology is absolutely shifting things. And uh, the marketing dollars that the major companies will provide for artists in the past is gone with the actual record sales. Mm -hmm. You know, so what was, this is taboo, this is almost like selling out. Five years ago, what, you know, what is great business from an artist's perspective now would be you're absolutely going in the opposite direction of what they think is cool. But it's about branding. Yeah, but and now it's complete brand extension. And but at least it's your brand, not their brand. Absolutely. So, so, uh, Unless you did the 360 deal, because the major record companies are changing their business model where they have an artist signed over portions of their touring and merchandising also. Mm -hmm. What do you think of, uh, how do you deal with piracy? Does it make you angry or do you just see it as part, part of the, the business marketing. and you got to do something about it? I see it as part of the marketing because the people that even purchase the material from a pirating perspective, they end up at the concert because they can't help but fall in love with the material at that point, whether they consumed it from downloading it on the actual internet or they went and purchased the material. So you're willing to have that be almost like a loss leader in order to sell tickets I to mean, concerts? We, we can't stop it. Yeah. You know what, what are you going to do? If the major record companies could, they would. How did you guys hook up? How did Robert Green? You, you, well, you and I talked years ago. I yeah. <laughs> you were my very first interview, and I'll never forget it. No, no way. Are you were, kidding me? He was so gentle. He told me you yeah. scared him. Yeah, I, no, 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 no. He was very reassuring. But, I mean, well, I did a book and, and in fact, you read that book. Yes. And you were impressed, and you said, let's do a book together, right? Absolutely. That 48 Laws of Power, 33 Strategies of War, yeah. Art, Art of Seduction. Yeah. A lot of people in hip hop um, really like the 48 Laws of Power because the music industry has to be perhaps the most Machiavellian environment that mm -hmm. there is. And they found the advice very helpful. So 50, he contacted me. And we thought it would be really interesting to do a book together because we come from such different backgrounds, but we have a sort of a similar way of thinking. Mm -hmm. So this is the monster that we created together. And I, I love the 50th law, fear nothing. <laughs> uh -huh. I, I see the Latin, nihil temendum est. Good pronunciation. Uh, well, yeah, they did Latin back then. So what was the ago. message that you wanted to get out that you felt Robert Greene could help you with? Well, just his laws and the 40 laws of power, the, the short of the law was translating completely different. Like people who didn't actually see the significance in the research just read the short mm -hmm. and, and said, okay, I understand how this applies to the actual environment. And they, they took that on. Like they, a lot of people that would make reference to Robert's first book would just make reference to the small portion of the actual law. And then it was exciting to see that I had some of the, uh, like I thought like some of these great people, mm -hmm. you know. So to get a chance to collaborate with them and just to tell them my, my other thoughts and some of my experiences and, and have them write it from those perspectives after mm -hmm. researching these other people, I thought it would be, you know, great. So who's going to read this book? People who listen to your music or people who read your books? Hopefully both. Both. <laughs> we want both. We want <laughs> everyone. And the people I mean, who haven't had an opportunity to read his books. We want to make it bigger than life. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're living through times where people are kind of are very frightened. You know, they're very scared. And the message of the book is you need to move past that fear it's, because in a couple of years or maybe less, this recession is going to be over. Right. And are you in a position to seize the moment and I think it's going to be a new entrepreneurial era or are you just waiting on some job? To I, think, be, you know? I think the majority of the, the companies on a Fortune 500 
were actually established during a recession. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's when opportunity it's presents right. itself, right? That's almost yeah. the definition of a recession when, when people are scared. I mean, it, to me, a recession is when people want to wait and see because they're too scared. Yes. Uh, and uh, definition of recovery is when people want to do it now because, you know, they fear nothing and they're going to get yeah, going. And so. a recession is predominantly for middle class, you know, because. Where, where I come from, the majority of those people have always lived in a recession. <laughs> yeah. hey, well, you, that's part yeah, of the, the point of the make, that you make in the book, book, Fear Nothing. Your mother was murdered when you were so young. Yeah. Your story is so, so sad on one level <laughs> as a child, and yet here you are. Your point, one of your points is, don't let fear get in your way because right. you can make it. Well, I've, I've had situations like you just pointed out that was so extreme to me in an earlier point that... It makes me go into these situations without fear, sure. you know, because I've already You've experienced been the worst yeah. por possible what, what scenario. What else would you lose? Yeah. And a lot of people think that the, his lack of fear is just the aggression and all that. But when you were talking about the video piracy and all that, he's really open to change and anything that's going on in the world. He just sort of embraces it and moves with it, which to me is sort of the epitome of being fearless. You know what I'm also struck by? We talked about this in our production meeting this morning. Back in the day, the, the, when the Rolling Stones, for example, to use them as, a, as an example, were coming up, you know, they were the rebels, they were the mavericks. As you would portray yourself, that would be your brand as well. But they really shunned business, per se. That right. would be selling out to be, to be involved in business. Your generation of, of music uh, uh, performers really embrace business, don't yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. I think, well, it is a significance to having the ability to be a part of these, actually, pro these projects. It's the interest that you generate through the popularity in music will allow you, you know, opportunities to be, you know, the face of actual companies, that major corporations that, like, I, I've done my own shoe with Reebok. You know, that, this is something that was completely reserved for professional athletes, you know, prior to myself and Sean Carter, you know. You, you watch CNBC, I assume, because you're a big stock market investor, right? <laughs> How's the stock market been treating you, and you're still trying to sell that big property out in Connecticut? Yeah, I'm still <laughs> trying to get rid of the elephant. <laughs> big white one, you know. <laughs> you know, real estate would be the safest place to put your money prior to it. So, so they told you. Yeah, right? that's what they no. told me. I need new, new. I need advice. <laughs> but I mean, you still got the hundred million from the 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 the, uh, the, well, the water deal. You know, it's put in the stock market. I, I hope live, not. I live pretty moderate. Where do you, you know, put I'm it? Not extreme. He put it into some new venture. He's always reinvesting. He's always got some new hustle up his sleeve. I ain't scared. That's what the book about. He doesn't stop put. <laughs> <laughs> but you also live below your means. That's a, it's an important aspect, right? Yeah, don't well, get you know, leveraged. Yeah, I don't want to be overexcited. I've seen, I have a great opportunity. I have great examples in front of me, presented to me without anyone speaking to me. Every morning I wake up in a home where Mike Tyson previously laid in the bed and he earned <laughs> over $500 million in his career. You know, Where so it? it makes me conscious. There you go. Yeah. You know what? You're a great guy. We enjoyed having you. It was a thrill meeting you, and uh, we wish you well with the book and all the other ventures you got coming out as well. Thank you. Great to see you. Fitty sent with us today with Robert Greene, co-author of the book, The 50th Law, and uh, that was a lot of fun.